The Lagos Governorship Election Petition Tribunal has dismissed the petition filed by the PDP candidate Olajide Adediran, a.k.a. Jandor, against the March 18 election while subsequently striking out and expunging all evidence and exhibits from Labour Party's candidate Gbadebo Vival Rhodes. According to the court, the petition filed against the election by Adediran and Rhodes Viva lacked merit and as a result, Governor Babajide Songolu and his deputy Obafemi Hamzat have been duly elected and therefore declared the winner. Joining us to discuss this is Shegun Shopitan. He's the chairman ACT Network. Uh, Mr. Shopitan, it's so good to have you join us. Good evening. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Like I always ask when it comes to these judgments, um, did you see this coming? Um, clearly, um, I don't think there are any surprises. Um, especially given the way, you know, the the, 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 the rulings have been rolling in. Um, and um, I think that there is a general trend. I might be wrong, but it looks that um, it looks like um, the the tribunals are generally unwilling to rock the boat. And um, the, the, the verdicts that have come in seem to have, um, I haven't seen anyone that has been earth shaking that has uh, tried to um, undo the status quo. Uh, especially at the um, gubernatorial and the presidential level. So no surprises here. I don't think anybody expected anything different. Um, I don't think that, especially given the precedence that has already been set by the presidential um, elections petition tribunal um, regarding the burden of proof um, that is required to obtain the election of the chief executive at the national, at the federal level, I don't think that we were expecting to see anything different at the state level because, you know, the implication of the ruling, especially of the presidential tribunal, was that you would pretty much have to prove polling unit by polling unit um, your case with regards to um, manipulation of the results. And, and we all know, given the time that the Electoral Act um, has made available for these cases. And indeed, given the time that, you know, such cases should run for anyway, we all know that it will be practically, practically impossible to prove on a polling unit by polling unit case um, basis, you know, a case uh, for, for manipulation of results or, or electoral malpractice. So it looks as if uh, the bar has been set extremely high again um, uh, for obtaining uh, the results of, uh, you know, the presidential and the gubernatorial elections. So no surprises here, Marianne. Hmm. Um, the, the tribunal has um, called the PDP um, candidate a busybody. I'd, I'd give you some insight into it. Um, the tribunal, in fact, Justice Mikhail Abdullahi, read the judgment on behalf of the panel. He said the petition did not fall under the provisions of section 177 and 182 of the Nigerian constitution as amended. He also declared that the tribunal did not have the powers to include or inquire into the primary election of the APC, which produced Songolu as um, the governorship candidate because the matter did not fall under its jurisdiction. And we've seen this recurring in other state governorship elections. Now, he says only an aspirant or a member of the political party can complain about the outcome of the party's primary, not a busybody like the petitioner, um, which is Jandor. Um, the, the, apparently, they focus mostly on the preliminary objections filed by the parties before passing the judgment on Jandor's case. So it looked to, from the outside, from the outside looking in, it looks like the Labour Party, the PDP, didn't have a watertight case per se that could, uh, beyond reasonable doubt, convince you know the panel uh, that you know there was any wrongdoing during the elections. Uh, although many people would disagree, being that they were part of the elections, they saw the violence, they saw um, you know all of the things that happened. But then, one would wonder. If a person is going to court based on the irregularities of an election, shouldn't they go prepared? Look, it, it looks to me as if there's something that is fundamentally wrong with our um, judicial system, with our justice system. It looks to me that um, the, 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 the procedures, the procedural 
um, requirements when you take these cases to court um, have been designed in, in a manner that has made um, um, delivery of justice very difficult. That, that's, that's, that's the pattern that, for me, I am beginning to see. Um, so like you said, you know, we, we, we were all witnesses to these elections. And regardless of what side of the divide you might be or you might fall, fall into, nobody will deny that those elections in, in, in significant places across the state um, had significant violence, significant malpractice, many of which were captured on video. Um, the question of materiality can come in, you know, but that then becomes a separate question. But I don't think that anybody can question the, the, the reality that those elections were extremely fractitious and that a lot of irregularities actually did take place. It, the, the, there's, there's ample and, you know, sufficient evidence in the public space. Now, converting that evidence in the public space to evidence in a court of law um, upon which a court can then make a decision to upturn such elections appear to be very difficult, you know, based on the procedures um, of our judicial okay. system. Um, so so, so the, 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 the tribunal would expect that the petitioners must come with watertight evidence to prove, for example, that their, their, their supporters were unable to cast their votes in enough polling units with enough registered voters to have influenced the outcome of the elections. Um, how do you prove this? You know, so the, 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 it, it looks to me as if whilst um, the reality that played out might be clear to everybody, the winners and the losers alike, um, Proving it in court uh, may really, really be very difficult. And, and I think we're seeing that across board. Uh, so for me, I, I would think that maybe we need to ask ourselves questions with regards to um, our justice administration system and, and try to find a system that is more pragmatic, mm -hmm. that is simpler and easier to, 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 to deliver, to, to prove your case and ensure that justice is delivered. So. We run um, a system that is modeled after the British um, uh, judicial system. I think we need to start looking across the pond towards the United States um, for a process that is more pragmatic, that is easier, where um, the burden of proof, uh, the nature of evidence, you know, and all of that are made are deliberately made easier, such that justice can be served more easily. What we have in Nigeria right now um, is really leaving, you know, a, a, a bad taste in the in the in the mouth of um, a large chunk of citizens. Of course, there will be people that will be happy with this outcome, and they will disagree, perhaps, with what I'm saying. Um, but um, I think, in the interest of the country, in the interest of progress, um, uh, the good of the of, of of the majority, I think we really need to ask ourselves questions on whether our justice system is indeed delivering justice for the majority. I, I have my doubts with regards to that. Still talking about proof here. Um, the tribunal deleted all exhibits that Rose Vival had submitted as proof uh, of Jando, uh, in Jandor's plea. Don't forget, these people submitted their petitions differently, and then after a while, it became a joint petition. Do you think that maybe that move by the Labour Party and the PDP to join their petition. In fact, because I see, I see that the court literally said Rhodes Viva could not challenge anything in Jandor's case because he could be seen as, you know, an intrusive outsider. Was it a very thought out plan to go together against Songolu in this particular case? I, I think the, their cases were consolidated by the court. Um, just like it happened at the presidential panel. What, 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 from, from what I've read uh, with regards to the outcome of this, um, the verdict of the tribunal, what it's done is not to strike out the evidence of the Labour Party and, and Rhodes Vivo um, against the APC and Governor Sonwolu. What it's done is to 
fault um, PDP's uh, Jando um, uh, um, in challenging, you know, it's, it's a very strange thing. It's actually unusual. I, I've never seen this before. What the PDP did was to challenge the victory of the APC and then join the Labour Party and Rose Vivo, who lost the election as co-respondents in their own case. Yeah. So in other words, what the PDP was trying to do was to say the APC uh, manipulated, no, the APC candidates did not qualify for, to even run for this election in the first place. Governor Sonwo Lu's um, certificate uh, was fake. Um, the Deputy Governor Hamzat uh, had dual citizenship. Um, they were not properly nominated by their parties due to, uh, I think, a mix-up in the timing of nomination and all of that. So disqualify them. Then the PDP now joined the Labour Party, who also lost the election, to say um, the Labour Party also, a uh, candidate, was not properly nominated, therefore disqualify him. So what the PDP was trying to do was to disqualify the two people that had more votes than them so that on the basis of their own 62,000 votes, remember, the APC, according to our next court, 760-something thousand votes. The Labour Party came second, scoring 300-something thousand votes. And the PDP came an extremely distant third with 62,000 votes. But the PDP wanted to disqualify, wanted the tribunal to disqualify the, P, the, the, the APC and the Labour Party and declare him as winner. So the court disagreed with the, with the PDP candidate on that note and said, we cannot, you cannot join a loser, somebody who lost along with you, as a respondent, respondent. alongside the winner. It's not done. So they will not entertain that. And they struck out everything that the PDP had brought against the Labour Party to prove uh, you know, the need for the tribunal to disqualify the Labour Party. That's what has happened. Uh, the reason that the tribunal has for um, um, striking out the petition of the Labour Party, it has not yet put it forward. So we'll still, I think it's a developing story. We'll still have to wait to hear what the tribunal has to say with regards to the Labour Party's petition against the APC. The APC. But right now it has settled that the APC actually won. And I think that's that. So the only thing that's just outstanding now is why? What, what's, what's wrong with the petition of the Labour Party that we still need to hear from? The tribunal with regards to that. I suspect that they're still sitting. If not, then maybe it's still tomorrow. I don't have that detail, you know, yeah. at the moment. L let's talk. As a representative of civil society and someone who advocates for good governance, and what we've seen, I mean, my previous segment, we talked about the situation in Kanu, and, you know, they're, they're moving to the appeal, to appeal that particular judgment. And just as you said, we've seen similar judgments across, you know, the country. Um, starting with the presidential uh, petition tribunal. Um, but many who have made a case for these judges are, are saying that the court is only able to work with what you present to them. And if you don't present enough evidence that goes beyond reasonable doubt, um, what you see is what you get. But as civil society, are we doing enough to make sure that these cases are watertized and if there be any case whatsoever to go to court with? Well, um, I think the only role that civil society has in this um, um, in this instance is maybe education, um, public enlightenment with regards to the processes in the various um, tribunals, um, ensuring that the, the the general public understand what is going on and um, hopefully accept the outcome. Because it's important for us to ensure for the for the sake of um, um, a, a, a functioning society, a functioning country, mm -hmm. we, the, the court is, 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 is the end, is the end game. Once the Supreme Court has made a pronouncement on any of these cases, it's over. There is no other recourse. We cannot talk about self-help. We can, you know, you can grumble, you can, you know, say whatever you want to say, but you have to accept the outcome. And I think that the, the role that civil society has is to continue to um, to drum this message into the consciousness of Nigerians so that society continues. Um, okay. If you lose today, you know, work harder, you win tomorrow. With regards to the actual outcomes and, you know, the goings on, you know, within the cases themselves, there's very little civil society can do. Um, the onus is squarely on the shoulders of the political parties. 
and um, the candidates themselves to ensure that they understand the, the rules, the procedures of these yeah. courts, understand the, 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 the limits that they have mm -hmm. and the extents mm -hmm. to which they can go or that they actually need to go to prove their cases and then to do so. It would seem to me as though for some reason, um, the legal representation in majority of these cases, as the rulings have started rolling in, it will seem as if the courts are saying that the lawyers are not doing enough. And these lawyers, in most cases, are sons. These are people that um, charge uh, tens of millions of naira, in some cases, hundreds of millions of naira, mm. to represent these people. And, and you find that um, the opinions of the judges seem to be suggesting that their work is very wishy-washy. You know, in fact, yeah. in the presidential yeah. election uh, petitions tribunal, the, the judges, the justices, actually lambasted the lawyers. You know, they, they, they descended almost to the point of descending into the arena, and um, they almost sounded as if they were taking sides with mm -hmm. the respondents to, to, to tell the, 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 the petitioners that they were very... Um, uh, that, 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 that their cases were poorly presented, okay. you know, and I, I yeah. found that very odd. I found it strange that the justices actually came down to almost insult, use insulting language against okay. the people that came to them to yeah. seek justice. Let, know, I found that quite strange. Lastly, let me just put this because we're out of time. Um, where I was going with that question again is, the average person will tell you because of what they've seen and the results of these elections, whether it's in their favor or not, will say, well, you told us, so civil society, the media, come out and vote. Your votes will count. Um, the judiciary is the last hope of the common person. But they're not seeing that and they're saying, next election, we're not showing up. Uh, we don't care anymore because the average person uh, is not prioritized in this country. Um, so. Again, you have your work cut out for you. How do you, in four years, try to convince those people to come back out and vote, risk their lives after what they endured during this election and they got no justice? Miriam, it's a tough, tough, tough job. You're absolutely right. Um, I remember, you know, personally going on air on so many TV stations to assure Nigerians on behalf of INEC that these elections based on the electoral act we're going to be our freest and fairest you know i, I went out I, I went out put my personal integrity on the line spoke you know so much copiously about these things you know so i felt personally disappointed with what happened so, so we go again you know like i said before society must continue for us to achieve you know the results that we desire to see the nigeria that we want to see we must not give up we have to keep at it um we have to keep the faith we have to now, between now and the next elections, we obviously need to take another look at the Electoral Act and tidy it up further to ensure that the loopholes that INEC um, played with, that the loopholes that some of the politicians played with are blocked, are blocked, you know. And then we go again, we start talking to the populace and try to reassure them, especially the young population mm -hmm. who came out so much, but, you know, were so terribly disappointed. We, we will not give up. We can't give up. The education continues. Um, the enlightenment continues. Um, you know, the encouragement continues. And, you know, eventually we will get there. Shago Shobazan is the chairman of ACT Network and also a good governance advocate. We want to say thank you for being part of the conversation. We appreciate it. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks for joining us. And that's the show tonight. Don't forget, you can follow us on YouTube to play catch up on our previous episodes on Plus TV Africa or Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Mary Anakun. Do have a pleasant evening.